today I'm gonna to be ranking the classes I've taken at UCLA as a freshman, my freshman year first. I'm a sophomore right now, but I'm gonna probably do sophomore year after I complete it. So for now, we're gonna start with year number one. I got my list on my computer right here, so let's go ahead and hop into it. All right, so here we are. Before we get into it, here's a couple things. I'm a neuroscience major, so these classes reflect the prereqs that I need towards my major. I'm on the pre-med track, so it's also classes I would need towards applying for medical school. And if you enter UCLA as a life science major, you're probably going to be taking most of these classes because the life science majors share a lot of the prerequisite classes. So this list might be a good indicator of what classes you should look out for or what classes you're going to be taking if you enter as a life science major. I'm including my first three quarters, my freshman year, and then the summer after it. And just to keep in mind, ultimately the difficulty of a class depends a lot on the professor and the TAs you have. The professor is the one who structures like the syllabus and everything. The TA is the one who actually grades your stuff. So it can vary depending on who's actually dealing with you. And as for the tier list itself, these rankings are purely my own personal opinion from my own personal experience. You have the S tier at the top, like usual, you know, a high quality 10 out of 10 class would take it again. The type of class you go into other discussion sections for fun. Although I never did that. To be an S tier, not only do I have to personally love the class, but it's gotta be fair and it's gotta be a well-structured one. And then D tier would be the exact opposite of that. I don't think there'd be any F tier classes, honestly. Um, I don't think so. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so first up on the list, I got Chem 14A, which is General Chemistry for Life Scientists. Basically the first part of Gen Chem. And I'm gonna put it uh, over at B tier. This class was fairly organized and everything was pretty well put together, but the lectures were a bit lacking in my personal opinion and most of the learning comes from like assigned textbook problems and reading the actual textbook. I'm not a big fan of reading the textbook when I don't have to. I feel like if I have to learn on my own, I'm not really getting as much from the class itself that I should be. I had my first test in this class and they were pretty anxiety inducing. I performed well. It's a pretty high stress class to take um, for my very first quarter at UCLA, but I pulled out well. I put in the B tier though. It wasn't anything too crazy. The material was a lot of review from high school for me, so it wasn't anything too interesting, but it was okay. Then we have LS30A. So LS30A is one of the math courses I had to take to fulfill my major requirements. And it was kind of strange, um, new concepts that I had never really learned before. So on one hand, I found it very interesting because I'm learning new stuff that I had never seen before anywhere in my career as a student, but it was easy overall. I took it in a, as opposed to taking a calculus class and this was a much easier alternative and I'm glad it was there. We also had a brilliant professor, he had two PhDs, one in philosophy, one in mathematics, I think. And he was a very down to earth guy though. He was really cool. At this point, the class was totally online and I gotta say, he really nailed the online formula. I have never had an online class better than his. It was structured really well. Everything was mostly fair, but it was just so different and so weird to me. The class demanded a lot of my time towards concepts I feel were not really useful anywhere outside of the scope of the class. It was very easy though, but I just personally did not enjoy it too much. I'm gonna put it in C tier. All right, and that takes us to my cluster 60A. So this was a general education course, a special one, the cluster meant that I'd be taking this series of classes for the entire year. It was interesting, it was structured with, it had four main pillars of the class. There was political science, history, musicology, and um, literature and pop culture, I always forget about that one. Political science and history were definitely the better lectures. Musicology was kind of difficult to wrap your head around, but the lectures for the music and presentations were pretty fun, pretty rich in content. The literature and the pop culture stuff was terrible though. I thought it'd be great because it's just like TV and movie posters, but it was not. I slept through every class whenever our literature professor was teaching that day. But I'm gonna put in the B tier just because I really enjoyed learning about late 50s and early 60s because I didn't get to learn about that in high school. Now we move on to winter 2022. Okay, Chem 14B. So this is just general chemistry part two, if you will. I'll be honest, I did not enjoy taking this class at all. It was online for about six weeks or so because of things happening with COVID and 
the school. A lot of things were going on at that time, actually. Just an extension of a lot of the ideas that we left off on in 14A. We had less support and we had harder tests and I did not appreciate that. I will put it actually in the D tier. I feel like I was learning everything by myself in that part, so. What you gonna do? LS30B, the math class part two. I'm gonna put this in the B tier at this point. Things in the class make more sense to me and they were easier to me. Um, and it became really low stress. I didn't really bat an eye about this class. I had the same professor. He was still really cool. He would show you how to do the homework. There was a lot of support for the class. It was still online, but like I said, his online model was perfect. I never stressed about it. I'll put in the B though, just because I wasn't too interested in the content. It was just basically combining mathematics with ecology and environmentalism. And while it might sound stimulating, it really wasn't all that to me personally. Cluster 60B. So this is a continuation of my GE course. So you can say the GE part two. I had some of the strangest assignments I've ever had to do in this class. It was a bit more boring than the first quarter. I was sleeping in a lot of those lectures. I don't know if I was just tired or disengaged, but it was not as engaging as it was the first quarter. The musicology in Cluster 60B though, I really enjoyed. They were talking about Motown, Jimi Hendrix, funk, soul, jazz, all these things in the 60s that I wanted to learn about when I signed up for the class. The essays were rough. I spent a lot of time actually going to office hours and stressing over these essays because I just did not know what the graders wanted. Everything was so vague. And I heard one of the assignments we did. It was the first time they ever did it, so go figure. The TAs didn't even know what to expect. Overall, I think I'm gonna put it in the seats here. The good, did not outweigh the bad, so it kind of just levels off as an average class. And then we come to our blacklimated class. Now this was a new one that I had signed up for. I think its official name is Education 98. And basically it was a class for black men to talk about various issues within academia and the black community and a bunch of these other things. We had really great articles that we would read and I would actually look forward to reading or articles about black men in education and where their role is, how their experience are, interpersonal relationships, all types of articles that kind of speak to our own experiences. And it felt very different to anything I'd ever experienced in school because it was through the lens of people like me. Very similar backgrounds to me. At UCLA, there's not a lot of us. The black male population is extremely small. So it was nice to get us all together in a room and talk about academic stuff. It kind of opened my eyes in a way and put words to phenomena that I couldn't describe before. It was pretty powerful, I won't lie. All we did was show up, talk, write a little reflection, but those discussions were very, very deep and edifying, I would say. All that being said, I didn't have a single problem with the class, so that lands it in the S tier. To this day, that was my favorite class I've taken so far. So that was a really good one. All right, now we get to spring of 2022. So a couple things changed. I took a break from chemistry and dived into biology. Okay, so let's do this, MCDB 30H. So I was in a research program and one of the requirements was to take this class. And it was basically a lab course. It was just a lot of molecular biology content. That we went over. I'm just gonna put it in B tier. It was pretty cool. It was my first lab course that I took here. First experience in a lab doing lab things. I think six hours was a bit much. Definitely six hours per week. It was at 9 a.m. two days a week. That was a bit rough, but I felt like I didn't have much of the basis that I needed. We kind of jumped into material that I didn't really have background information on and it's not necessarily anybody's fault that's just kind of how it worked out it was a tight-knit group in the whole class there was only like 24 students because we're all part of this one program we went to lecture instead of the big lecture halls i was used to we would just go into a small classroom with a chalkboard and we would have handwritten tests it really felt like i was kind of going backwards in high school and i kind of liked that but i didn't like that at the same time it was a tight-knit group it was a pretty fun dynamic i do kind of miss it i'll go ahead and put in the b tier so at the same time, I was taking LS7A, which is the first biology course you can take. So I was taking this concurrently with the other bio class. I would actually go from the lab in the morning, which was like nine to 12. And then at 12.30, I would go to LS7A, the biology class. So by this point, I was a bit tired and 
kind of biologyed out with my brain. I didn't really want to take any more info. The professor was pretty good, but I wasn't really in too interested in the material at the time. And the class was a lot of busy work that I had to constantly keep up with, which I did, but I didn't really enjoy having to constantly keep up with a lot of these deadlines and small assignments that I felt like really weren't helping me learn anything. I felt like in a way, um, they were trying to hold my hand every single day like there was something to do every single day something to turn in every single day and i think it makes for a great first class to take your first quarter but for me i feel like i'd already developed my system they were kind of just being a nuisance a bother with all these things to try and keep me on track so i didn't really appreciate that but i understand that it is an introductory class so i'll go ahead and give it a b tier it wasn't too bad and then my last class for that quarter was cluster 60c i'm gonna put it in c tier cluster 60c is where you break off from just the regular cluster and go into a specialization so i have musicology literature political science or the last one history and then you do a whole class based on one of those things. I got into a musicology class and it was on country music. What had happened was when I was applying for my classes, we have a specific time where you can choose and you gotta be there to choose so that your classes don't get filled before you can select it. So I had slept past mine, my enrollment time. I totally knocked out. I woke up about two hours after my time and saw all the classes I had wanted were gone. The only one left, was a literature one and a music one. So I went with the music one and it turned out it was a country music one. At first I dreaded it, but I realized it was actually perfect for me. I love talking about music. I got writing credit for a class where we barely wrote anything. We only had one project and it was to make a podcast on a song for a country star. So I didn't really have to write any essays. I just had to make a podcast. I chose to do a podcast on Charlie Pride, a black country star. And that made it really easy. Instead of going full in on country, I was able to combine black history with my project. So that just made the whole class an easy edit. And then we move on to summer. I took LS7B. Um, this is a pretty interesting class because a lot of people don't really like it. There's two parts, genetics, and ecology, a lot of people do not like the ecology part and find the genetics part is really difficult. It was difficult and time consuming. I took it over the summer, but I really enjoyed the genetics portion. And surprisingly, I enjoyed the ecology portion. There was ecology in my LS30 series, those math classes. I didn't really enjoy it there, but I enjoyed it here. I had the same professor as LS7A and he was still really good at um, structuring the class. The class was fair for the most part. The tests were pretty difficult, but looking back, they really were fair. I honestly enjoyed the class, so I gotta go ahead and put it in the A tier. And then my last class on this list I took was another GE, a sociology class. Sociology is one of the classes that they require you to take for med school, so that's why I took it. I just want to kind of get in the mind of how people think and how interactions and relationships work. And I really enjoyed this class. It was simple enough, fair enough. You just actually need to read all the readings, like all of them, but they were also pretty interesting. I'll put that class in the A tier too. I had fun with it. It was overall pretty easy. And even though I was really busy at the time, I was able to pull through with both this class and LS7B. So I was pretty happy with myself. I'm pretty happy with those classes. Here's the complete tier list on my freshman year. I'm less than halfway through college at the moment. And I've heard a lot of people say, once you get out of your prereq classes, they get a lot better because you're studying stuff you're actually interested in. So there's still hope for some more classes later down the road to hop into that S and A tier. But for now, this is what it's looking like. But anyways, thank you for watching the video. Leave a comment on what you think this list should look like. Let me know what you think of the classes that you've been taking recently. If you're in school or if you've been in school. To my classmates that took these classes with me, please let me know what you actually thought of them. Because I mean, I'll be lying when you said you loved everything about it. I know. All my socials, share with a friend, all that good stuff. All right, I'll see you guys next time.